Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. We have sine x equals x squared plus x plus 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. Now, this is just a joke, Not don't take it seriously. If we did arc sine on both sides, we would get the x, right? So it would be x equals arc sine or inverse sine of x squared plus x plus 1 obviously, but this wouldn't help at all because our goal is to solve for x, which means we can only have x on one side. So what can we do for these kinds of problems? Since this problem is non-standard, it cannot be solved by normal means. A computer system obviously can solve it using approximation, so on and so forth, but that's not our goal, right? Well, from alpha I can probably give you some solutions if there are any, and I'll actually show you some solutions from Wolfram Alpha at the end if I don't forget, okay? So that's not our goal. Our goal is not to approximate. We're not going to be using any numerical values or numerical approaches. We're not going to do numerical analysis. That's not what this channel is all about. We do purely algebra and we use non-standard methods, okay? So we're going to be using an interesting approach to solve this problem. Ready, set, go. First of all, I want you to notice that sine of x is between two values, if x is real. So for real values of x, if, if x is a real number, then we can safely say that sine x will be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive, which means it can take the value of 1 and negative 1. And you probably know from unit circle where sine x can be those values, those are the special values, here sine x is 1, here sine x is negative 1. And those correspond to pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, or sometimes you can express it as negative pi over 2. If you're dealing with complex numbers, with the principal uh, argument, you know, things are a little different. If you're just doing trigonometry and you want to keep everything positive, then that's also a different story. But anyways, you get the idea, sine x can be between those values, including those values. So that's a closed interval. Great. But what does that have to do with the solution? I told you, we're going to use an interesting approach because we cannot solve this by normal means. This is not a polynomial. This is not trigonometric. It's both. It's a mixture, right? So first of all, I want you to notice that sine x is between those values for real x's. What about the other one? Well, the other one, uh, the graph of x squared plus x plus 1 is a parabola, right? So if you think about it as a function, f of x equals x squared plus x plus 1, the graph is a parabola, which means it's either going to open up or down. In this case, it does open up, right? Because of the value of a, which is positive. And of course, that uh, every parabola should have a vertex, right? This is kind of like an up and down parabola, not the, the kind where you have x equals f of y or g of y. This is like a kind of like a normal standard parabola, right? That you learn in algebra. So it has a vertex. Well, what is so... Significant about, the, significant about the vertex is that uh, at the vertex, uh, our parabola has the minimum or the maximum value. Since it opens up, it's going to look like this. So we're going to have a minimum value at the vertex. How do we find the vertex? Good question. So if you have f of x, just let's just talk about a general approach. And by the way, it's not the same f of x here, so don't get stuck on that. x squared plus bx plus c in general. Uh, from here, uh, you can find the vertex as... Uh, negative b over 2a, which gives you the x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is going to be f of negative b over 2a, because if you plug in the x-value, you get the y-value, right? So there's a couple uh, different letters you can use. Uh, this is usually h in the vertex language, and this is usually k. And there's actually a way to find, so h is equal to negative b over 2a, which is the x-coordinate of the vertex, but k can also be found by the help of a formula, which is 4ac minus b squared all over uh, 4a. By the way, uh, when I was in uh, high school, I memorized this formula because they made us memorize it. It was kind of helpful, but you could always plug it in. You don't really have to memorize it. By the way, one thing to notice is that the numerator is negative uh, delta, okay? That's something that is kind of interesting, that I found interesting. And you can definitely prove that by doing a little bit of algebraic manipulation. That's not what we're going to do. I just wanted to show you how you can find the vertex. So since our function is x squared plus x plus 1, in this case, a is 1, b is 1, c is 1, everything is 1, that's good. 
So H is going to be negative B, which is negative 1 over 2. And then K from here is just going to be, if you just plug it in, like I said earlier, it's a lot easier. And I would definitely add these two first. That gives me 5 fourths minus 2 fourths is going to be 3 fourths. There you go. So vertex is at negative 1 half comma 3 fourths. And this means that our parabola is going to take the minimum value. At negative 1 half, the minimum value is going to be 3 fourths. So, in other words, the y values on the right-hand side has to be greater than 3 fourths. So, this expression right here needs to be greater than 3 fourths, right? But why is that happening? Let's go ahead and look a little deeper and try to find out why that's happening, okay? By the way, I should say greater than or equal to because obviously y can be 3 fourths, okay? So, let's go ahead and look at this from a different perspective and I will uh, give you... Uh, the actual method towards the end, okay? So we can basically write this as x squared plus x plus one-fourth, which is a perfect square, by the way, plus three-fourths. And this happens to be x plus one-half squared, which kind of explains where the vertex is because this is called the vertex form. And as you can see here, this is non-negative. So this expression is definitely greater than or equal to three-fourths. And when this becomes zero, it becomes three-fourths. And that happens at x equals negative one-half. You see, you can kind of put it all together if you write a parabola in vertex form. So this is the minimum value. What about the sine x? Sine x can be between one and negative one. So there's a chance that they will intersect, right? Because sine x, now think about it, a function can be one, this is the maximum value for it, like kind of like a ceiling, right? Sine x can go through here, and this guy can be three-fourths. That's the minimum. So maybe they will intersect somewhere in between, right? That's the million-dollar question, and we're going to answer that right now, okay? Are you ready? So here's the idea. Even though they look like they're going to intersect, and guess what? I'm going to show you a graph which will explain things. But think about it this way. From a, a parabola perspective, if you go ahead and write this a little differently like this, okay? Now, when x is on an interval, like we're going to look at the sign of this expression, okay? So I'm going to make a table, put the roots, I'll make it quick, and then this will become like plus minus plus. So when x is outside these values, this is x by the way, our expression is going to be positive, and when you add 1 to it, it's going to be greater than 1. Make sense? So in other words, this expression is greater than 1 if x is greater than 0 or less than negative 1. Make sense? Okay. What happens if it's between? If x is between negative 1 and 0, then this expression is actually going to be greater than 0. Why? because this expression is still less than negative one on that interval, you can definitely check like negative one half, right? Negative one half multiplied by one half, you're gonna see something uh, greater than negative one. Therefore, the sum is gonna be positive. What does that mean? On this interval, on this interval, sine x is less than zero. Why? If you look at the graph, you can tell, but also looking at the intervals where uh, sine is negative and positive on the unit circle, you can also tell because x is less than zero, think about it. That means you're going to be in the fourth quadrant where sine is negative, right? So we don't have any real solutions. Surprise! Okay, here's the graph. As you can see, they might intersect, they don't. But as you can see, they do not intersect. Anyways, I don't know what I just said. That probably didn't make sense. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.